You're listening to the Consistent Briefing Show Podcast on NKFM. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Welcome back. Welcome back to another edition of the Contested Briefing Podcast. My name is Jason Bett and I will be your host for today's podcast. It is now the 9th of November. Just gone off to 2 o'clock on this lovely Saturday afternoon. And yes, congratulations, many congratulations to the Springboks on winning the World Cup for 2019. It was awesome. Yes, sir. Did I have a mean party last week Saturday? It was awesome. It was awesome. All right. Just want to... Uh, my apologies. My apologies for Pietras to tweet not to do in uh, last week's podcast. Uh, I spoke to him. We were going to do it in this week. He's got this nasty, nasty cough. Pietras, if you're out there listening to this, my man, we're still going to have that podcast. We're going to have that podcast on... You being a year later in New Zealand, we, we, we're going to do it. We're still going to do it. But first get better, bro. It's like you said, you don't want to have a podcast and then <coughs> and then you'll like cough every two minutes. It's going to be annoying. I, I agree with you fully. So get better, my boot. Get better. All right, let's get into it. Um, the podcast for today on sex education. Um, there was an article in The Citizen in October. This year, uh, the ACDP says uh, sex education in schools is anti-family, anti-marriage, and anti-Christian. The party believes educating learners about sex is an attempt by the government to poison the minds of the country's children. And I agree. I agree fully. But I know there's going to be a lot of you that don't agree with it, and especially those of you that's on the left. Um, It's wrong, guys. There's this video that's been surfacing on Facebook for some time now, and I'm going to play it as we do my podcast with Beth. Uh, It's shocking, guys. It's shocking to see how governments of the world can allow grade fours to learn uh, this type of stuff that that I'm going to show you on the video. It's it's, it's not cool, guys. So anyway, let's let's get into the podcast. Let me get Beth uh, on the line. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to ask her some questions. And then we're going to go in deep. If a lot of you see me as a, a stinking old conservative, I don't care. I don't care if you see me as a stinking old conservative. It's just, it's just some things you've got to do right and, and not wrong. I mean, sure, kids, kids are not going to know any better. Um, I know there's a lot of angry parents out there that are upset, up, uh, upset, upset to realize and f- discover what their children is actually learning in schools, and it's, and it's wrong. So to all the parents out there, don't, don't just keep quiet, guys. Uh, go out there and, and make a boo sign up a petition. Uh, this type of sex education, it, it cannot be allowed. It cannot be allowed in South Africa, and, and we're going to talk about it right now. Let me get Beth on the line. Beth, how are you, Beth? Are you there? I'm good. Hi. How are you, Jason? Awesome. I'm always awesome. Awesome. Welcome back. Welcome back to my podcast for the second time. You're the second time on my podcast. Am I awesome. the first one to, to do it twice? Am no. I privileged? No, Wesley. Oh, yeah. No, Wesley. Wesley's been on my show twice. Oh, I'm going to have yeah. to do another one. Oh, no, no, man. That's, that's fine. That's good. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I'm, just, I'm getting into a pissing contest with Wesley, and that's it. <laughs> no, not at all, man. <laughs> Listen, uh, give, give the listeners out there a quick intro, who, who you are, what you're about. Okay, so I'm a crazy person that um, uh, we met online, and that's how, and I'm a mom, I'm a homeschooling mom, and yes. that is uh, why I actually have a dog in this fight of, on what we're actually going to discuss, and I'm a bit of a... Um, an activist as far as giving children the correct um, education. Yes. And I'm not sure. And I do also tend to be a little bit more conservative in my views uh, with regards to raising children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think the world has just gone a little bit crazy. 
and so that's why we're here and that's why we're having this conversation. That's and, right. Um, but but before we go into the podcast, um, I did a podcast two weeks ago where I spoke about the Buddha a bit, and then I said uh, about the Boka, how people were bad mouth in the book, and especially that Yuan De Jong character. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Did you check that uh, there was a clip of him on the Jacaranda FM, Mart- the Martin Bester show? Jammer, I come now weer terug. The All Black Party keeps me longer on hold than I thought. But the Springbok Party is much better than the All Black Party. <laughs> Kan ek het hierdie geleentheid gebruik om vir Zuid-Afrika en die springbokke te sê, baie geluk met die wereldbeker, um, jylle verdien dit, jylle het die Engelse uitgehaal, soos die Engelse die All Blacks uitgehaal het, maar baie geluk aan die springbokspan en aan hulle ondersteuners. Jammer oor my video, um, my film daar is voorbij, <laughs> en um, vir allemaal in Zuid-Afrika, uh, geseende kersfeest en een voorspoedige 2020. Baie dankie jylle. No, I he, can't he, say that I... Okay, he actually, apo- that. he actually apologized now. And he, he said sorry to everyone. Uh, congratulations to the Boca for winning the World Cup. And and it's absolute awesome, eh? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'll be honest, when we played that opening match with New Zealand, I was like, okay, this is it. Either our World Cup is over or we're going to come back angrier yeah. and stronger and we're going to take it. And, well, I'm glad the second was true. So somebody was telling me today, Faf de Klerk and, and Villeroo, there was a lot of focus on those two with Faf de Klerk and his kicking and Villeroo mm-hmm. dropping the ball. Some say, well, the guy that I spoke to, a friend of mine, he says there was a strategy that uh, Rasia Rasmus put in there to play, making the teams believe that, oh, Keiko Spili Boka, you know, look at the box they're playing. Because... <laughs> England was sour grapes. Though. When, when, when they lost, they, everybody said they didn't expect it. They, they demand a replay. I mean, what a bunch of sour grapes. Eh? <laughs> I, I think also the, the part of the demanding a replay um, is also that's having a dig at the UK and not um, following through on Brexit, like yeah. saying, no, we'll have a revote. So I think there's a lot of political stuff going on there. No, that, definitely. Um, underlying it. Uh, but yeah, the, the way, like when you see South Africa and New Zealand play and the sportsmanship that the, those two teams show each other after the match, it is incredible. Yeah, yeah. And then to get that type of behavior from England that the English captain doesn't even congratulate South Africa for winning the World Cup. Yeah. Like, come on. I mean, Kieran Reid the week previously congratulated England for being the better team on the day. Yeah, like, absolutely. On, yeah, we were the, we were the uh, underdogs, of course. So, uh, nobody expected. I mean, no, no. especially Yuan uh, Yuan de Jong. <laughs> God bless his soul. <laughs> but anyway, it doesn't matter. We no, won. We uh, fun. Here's a fun fact. Now, now listen Ooh. to this, Beth. <clears throat> before we go into the podcast, in 1995. Uh, that year, the Cheetahs won the Curry Cup. Mm-hmm. Twelve years later, 2007, the Cheetahs won the Curry Cup again that year, and then we won the World Cup. Twelve years oh. later, again, 2019, the Cheetahs won the Curry Cup, and we took the World Cup. Isn't that a coincidence or what? Yeah, that's kind of freaky. It is freaky. When, every, when everybody was saying when the World Cup started, you know, South Africa's going to win this one because we win every 12 years. So this one's in the back. I was like, Okay, so now we went on superstition, not how good our team is. Oh, exactly. But they were right. So maybe superstition does have something to do with it. Absolutely. All right, let's get into it. Let's get into the podcast. Um, I have a quick All intro right. here that I want to read. Uh, okay. Should schools be teaching sex education? Opponents say, leave it to the parents. But a uh, few mothers and fathers do a good job preparing their children for the sexual challenges of adolescents, let alone for caring, ethical, and fulfilling sex lives as adults. The reasons are pretty straightforward. Parents aren't trade sex educators. They often have difficulty accepting that their teens are sexual beings, 
And those teens tend to be intensely uncomfortable, uncomfortable talking about the stuff with mom and dad. Mm. Parents do the best they can, but kids need much more. But is this the right thing to do? And yeah, so let's get into it. Let's get into the first question. So why are governments allowing sex education in the curriculum of schools? Is, is this... Wait, you know what? There's a video that I want to play quickly. Let me, let me get into it quickly. Let me play the video. Beth, you're not going to be able to see this video, eh? Uh, That's but fine. Um, you, you did see it, but just for the listeners out yeah. there, I want, to play, I want to play this video. So that just that the listeners and the viewers out there can get a, a, a sense of what's, what's going on. Oh, man, I just want to find this video now. This is definitely an attack. It will affect your child rearing. It will affect your education system. This is instructions for the teacher in the classroom to ask her or his students, how do people express their sexual feelings? Oral sex, masturbation, anal sex, massage, holding hands, touching each other's genitals, saying, I like you. It is pornography. Men, especially on the house floor, did not want to look at. We couldn't show this on the television news, but yet we want our fourth grade children to be looking at this book. The World Health Organization standards for sexuality education in Europe actually suggest that children ages 0 to 4 should be given information about masturbation and given the right to explore their gender identities. For ages 4 to 6, children should be taught about same-sex relationships and respect for different norms regarding sexuality. Some of the objectives of the UNESCO sexuality education guidelines include teaching children at age 9 about sexual stimulation and the definition and function of orgasm and at age 15 that both men and women can receive sexual pleasure with a partner of the same or opposite sex. An online CSE program for African youth called The World Starts With Me tells children that sexuality includes oral sex and masturbation. They have elementary students as young as nine years old. Then they teach them how to wear a condom and they have this plastic genitalia and they even have uh, young girls, they're teaching them how to put a condom on a male genitalia and boys how to put a condom on a woman genitalia without the knowledge and consent of the parents. They're giving them handouts, negotiating sexual encounters with other students. For example, there are statements like this, can I take your shirt off? It makes me hot when you touch me here. Is it okay if I take my pants off? This pamphlet called Healthy, Happy and Hot tells young people that you have the right not to disclose your HIV status to a sexual partner if you're not comfortable. It also tells young people that are HIV positive that if they decide with their partner not to wear a condom, that's their decision. On page 89 of a UNICEF-published Sexual and Reproductive Health Manual, UNICEF listed situations in which one can obtain sexual pleasure that included sexual responses directed towards inanimate objects, animals, minors, and non-consenting persons. In the context of the Sustainable Development Goals, that determines the agenda for the next 15 years. The voice is very, very biased. It's just International Planned Parenthood Federation and their affiliates. It's All One, however, like most CSC programs, is really just cleverly disguised abortion rights, sexual pleasure education, masquerading as human rights, gender, and sexual and reproductive health education. It aggressively promotes abortion with over 112 references to abortion. It's all one has an obsessive focus on sexual pleasure, mentioning sexual pleasure 62 times. Comprehensive sexuality education programs are disguised under many names. They may be called comprehensive sex or sexual education, education on human sexuality, reproductive health education, information on sexual and reproductive health, family life education, teen pregnancy prevention, rape prevention, anti-bullying programs, HIV AIDS prevention, and sometimes even abstinence or abstinence plus education. One of the handouts that concerns me the most is called the gender bread person. They teach that gender is a spectrum, that you can choose to be whatever you want. Say not to CSE! Say not to CSE! 
We've got to stop it. We've got to use everything at our disposal. We have to stand together. My family is mine. My wife is mine. I am hers. Our children are ours. Band it together and find ways to stop it from entering your country. If we don't do something about it, it is all of us that carry that guilt. To learn more and to sign the petition to stop comprehensive sexuality education, go to stopcse.org. Together, we can and will protect the world's children. Is mine. Okay, Beth. Yeah. Okay, I've I've played it now. Um, <clears throat> okay, you've seen the video. I have. What's 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 your thoughts on that video? Um. To be honest, it was like a huge eye opener for me, and it actually um, made me realize why I'd been catching some of the hate that I've been catching in certain Facebook groups whenever I brought up sexual education and yeah. that it should be um, um, like complete uh, sexual education. And Seeing that video, it now puts it in context that this is what people assume I mean when I talk about something like that. Yeah. But I, I don't mean that at all. I believe that what that video shows sexualizes children from a very young age. And I think that that's disgusting. There is no way that a nine-year-old should have to learn how to put a condom on. Exa- exa- exactly. No I agree with you. It's, it's totally wrong, man. So the question is, <laughs> governments are allowing it in probably in certain countries, but not all. I, I don't know. I don't know what the curriculum like is in South Africa at the moment. Um, no, I, I you, haven't seen You're doing homeschooling at home. Um, yes. You're not doing this at the moment. No, obviously not. No, well, my daughter is 12. So obviously she has had the talk. Okay. Because obviously her body has already started changing. Her body started changing years ago already. So it was already something that I had to preempt with her. Yeah. Um, but my boys are seven and four. But something I can tell you that my boys know is that my boys know that they have a penis and a scrotum. They don't have a willy and balls. Okay, yeah, no, which is fair. We, of course, you use the right language. Uh. Yes, because it has been statistically proven that children that refer to their body parts as food, like a cookie and a sausage, yeah. are more susceptible to being sexually abused. And then if the sexual abuse is uncovered and it actually gets to court, the defense attorney can actually say, no, but maybe the child was referring to an actual sausage or an actual cookie. So the perpetrator didn't actually sexually assault them. Yeah, true. And it actually makes it more traumatic for the children as well. So, and um, there is a, a Facebook a page called Conscious Connected Parent Parenting, and yeah, yeah. Um, she did a video last night um, discussing this. She she did a live stream discussing those sorts of things. And in her original post, she has a list of links. Okay. And so I'm not going to rehash everything that she said because first of all, I don't want to steal her content. Absolutely. And second of all, I don't need to repeat it. Everybody can refer to her post. Kareen is amazing when it comes to parenting in the modern world as a gentle parent. And was was that the she, link you sent me, Nana? That's the link. I okay, I'll, I'll I'll plug it in my description for the listeners out there, and they can listen to yes. what, what she said. Absolutely. Yes, and she talks about the Bible and everything as well. So even people that are religious that are against this this type of um, against sex education. Yeah. They can go and have a listen to that. Um, so, yeah, um, as for that video, I, um, I just, like, I, I, I can't even begin to touch on the spectrum of genders, yeah, yeah. okay? Because I will, I'll get really, really angry and I'll go off on tangents and this podcast will turn into a four-hour rant session. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm just not going to go there. If people want to think that I'm transphobic, that's fine. They can think whatever they care. I I really don't care. I'm not transphobic, but but do not. Exactly. That type of stuff 
onto children. Children are incredibly susceptible. So that, that's just something, it, it's an absolute no-go in my books. And no. Well, I had a podcast with the, the, the Dodger Idealist and, we, and the, the podcast was about social media is not helping. And this is it's exactly not. the thing. I mean, this is available on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, people say that they say from the age of 13, they let their children have uh, cell phones where they can go on the internet, but I don't believe it's true. I think, I think there's children out there that have their cell phones at a younger age, even from the age of 10. Absolutely. And, they, and, they're, and exposed, they're exposed to this. Yes, and this is why it's actually very important because it, it's ironic that it's, it's the same um, privileged, for lack of a better word, parents that are opposing sex ed in schools that are giving these devices to children as young as seven, eight, nine years old. Yeah. Well, what type of curriculum should be put in place if government feels that uh, parents are not teaching their teenagers the basics? Well, in, in this case, it's not teenagers. In this case, it's, it's great as, as low as, as grade fours. So- well, look, anybody, anybody who's had a second child or a child, um, your child has been exposed to a pregnant cousin or auntie or, you know, a friend is pregnant, they're all going to eventually be asked by a child how are babies made and they're going to be asked that question before they're actually ready to answer it and the reason why they're not ready to answer it is because they're too caught up in the pleasurable side of sex Mm. in the fact that consenting adults actually have pleasurable sex on a regular basis and it's part of your connection with your partner Mm -hmm. they're too caught up in that aspect of sex Take away the pleasures. Take away how many times a week you do it. Take all of that away and just focus on the mechanics and the science behind making a baby. Yeah. And teach that to your children as soon as they ask the question. I'm not saying explain to them in graphic detail how a penis enters a vagina. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. saying explain to them that a man and a woman can lie together or however you feel it is appropriate for their age and they can make a baby. So, for example, I've said this to my son who's now four when yeah. he was three because my niece was growing a baby. Mm. Now, I couldn't tell him, well, you know, they're married now, so that's why um, they can have a baby because they're not married. Yeah. So it's like a very... Um, even though they're in a committed relationship, they, they still, they haven't got married. Mm-mm. So it's a very um, difficult thing to, to navigate in the modern world because people aren't getting married anymore. Yeah, that too. It, it's not only that, I just feel that children are becoming more wiser from a younger age than what they were, uh, what we were like 20, 30 years ago. I mean, I only started to really get to know about sex uh, probably at the age of 12 or so. Yeah, but also boys boys hit puberty a lot earlier than what girls do. Uh, Yeah, true. True, Than what girls do. You know, I mean, we're talking about girls that are menstruating from the age of eight now. That is really, really young. That is young. And it is the exception and not the norm. Yeah. But, you know, it is – it's – you know, their bodies start changing, their hips start um, getting wider, they start developing breasts and things like that from like nine, ten years old. And you have to explain this to them, why their body is changing and why it's necessary for their body to change. But but, but of course, in a friendly manner, not, not in a... Yes, crude, absolutely. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's uh, for me and my daughter, it was quite easy because... Um, as a family, we've always taken showers together. I don't believe in hiding the, the parent's naked body from the children. Okay, okay, okay. Because that can invite shame as well. It's like, oh, they're hiding their body, so that it must be something shameful. So we've never hidden that. So my daughter has always known that there are differences between my body and her body. So when she started experiencing those changes, I could say to her, okay, but you're starting to grow up. So, you know, you're starting to get boobs like mommy and your auntie and, you know, and. 
Yeah, that's... Uh, we, we can agree upon it. I mean, times has changed. Uh, I, I know from, from my age, I mean, that was hidden away from me. I mean, uh, mm. mommy and daddy went to go bath. That was that. Uh, you weren't allowed to see that, you know. I, mm. I don't see it as wrong, so, but maybe people are going to label me as a conservative because I'm, I'm still stuck in the old ways. <laughs> but the thing is, it, it's what you grew up with. Yes, yeah, what you grew up with. Yeah. You're indoctrination. Like, yeah. And I'm not saying that either way is right or wrong. I'm just saying the way that I chose to approach it with my children. Yeah. And I feel that it's working because my children are aware. And also, I know that because I've been a lot more open and a lot more honest with my children, my children are more likely to come and talk to me than I was to go and talk to my parents. Yeah, we're involving, of course. I mean, I understand that. I sympathize with it, 100%. I, I see nothing wrong with it. But uh, the third question, what do teachers in South Africa currently teach pupils? And, and from what grade? What it's curriculum good, is in place? It's I, a good question because I, I, I can't know. actually um, nail down what exactly is in the curriculum. The DDE has been a little bit um, closeted with what is in the curriculum. They have said that, you know, all of this media hype is not true and it's fake news and everything, but they haven't, like, made the, the curriculum public. Yeah, not yet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I never, in high school, we never learned about, uh, there was no sex education in high school, in the high school that I was in. I don't believe there was in the high school either, but no. we did have it in primary school. The, and, and this is probably it because everyone is stuck in their conservative ways, yeah, so it's, it's time yeah. for change. We had one, um, I think there were one or two classes in Standard 5, Grade 7, where all of the girls were separated from the boys and we were told about the birds and the bees. Yeah, absolutely. Well, my dad sat me down and told me about the birds and the bees. Of course, you felt awkward about it and you felt uncomfortable, but it was something that I probably wanted to hear from my parents, but I never, that was the thing, I never, I heard it from mm. school. Uh, friends, friends at school, you know, not the teachers, but but friends. Yeah, and you see, that's where misinformation and um, maybe maybe this is why governments are doing this. What's coming? I think so. Maybe this is because you're hearing it from the wrong mouth. You're hearing it from your friends, and you're not getting the right information. I think that that, that trying, could be that could be. I, I I I agree there. I think they are trying to preempt it because. Um, it's been proven that, you know, early sex education can reduce uh, abuse and, and things like that. But the thing is, they're still not doing it right. Yeah, they're not doing it right, yeah. You don't want not, to teach a grade four. They're not, to, yeah. they're not in your home when your child is learning how to speak and teaching your child, this is a penis, this is a vulva, this is a vagina, this is a yeah. scrotum. Yeah, they're true. not teaching them those things. They are true. And that is where it starts. Because let me tell you something, as soon as that child starts calling a penis something other than a penis, yeah. you are going to battle to get them to drop that that word. Yeah, true, eh? Well, the, okay. The last question is, can we agree the lessons that were taught to the youth, uh, the biblical way, was the right way? Well, I'm, I'm not really saying it was, but yeah. Until governments thought it would be a good idea to change the rules a bit. What, what's, um, what's your feeling on the biblical way? I the mean, the biblical, biblical way, way, the biblical way to me was taught that uh, no sex before marriage. Yeah. You, you know, and I suppose it, 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 start, it comes from there. It starts from that way. Okay. Um, I think no sex before marriage, and especially in today's world, is a very... Um, unrealistic goal to have just even if you just look at it simply from the point where you know we're not getting married at the age of 18 anymore mm. we're delaying marriage until we're like 30 and so i mean you're not you're going to be hard pressed to find a 30 year old virgin okay? yeah no true it's, it's not unheard of but it, it's you're going to be hard pressed to find it so that's my first thing against it. The second thing is I'm not religious. Okay. 
Um, I don't knock religion. Um, I believe that everybody has the right to their own To their own opinions, opinions 100%. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Thank you for everything. that. everything. Thank and you for I that. I will never, like, look down on somebody and say, oh, you're a Christian, really. Like, God doesn't exist. I'm an atheist. You should join my tribe. No, yeah, I'm not that type of person. Thank okay. you. Yeah, hundreds. <laughs> because I actually just don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. Is God real? Or, like, I just don't know. So it's just... I'm just not going to push my opinion on anybody else. Yeah, well, my opinion, it's, it's faith. It's all about faith. If you don't have faith, then you're not a believer. And, um, I mean, then, uh, yeah, yeah, it can get a touchy subject, I know, because atheists will believe, uh, will say things like, was there really a burning bush? Or was there a cloud up in the sky? And they, they, they say it's all fairy tales. I, I understand. I can sympathize with that. But I it, have heard yeah. Christians, very, very strong believer Christians, that are also scientists, reason it this way. They say that the Bible is a book of stories yeah. to pre that is used as a tool to preach the Word of God. Do not take the Bible literally, but look at it as a set of stories to teach the lessons of God. It's a guideline to mankind. Um, it's, exactly. it's, it's basically a book where morality has been taught. Um, it's, it's your choice to read what you want to read there and believe. But I always say, you take a look at, uh, for example, the book of King Solomon. There's a lot of stories in that Bible that make sense. And the book of Job also, that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, the biblical way, the Bible had its reasons why sex was prohibited until marriage. They had their reasons. I mean, we can understand that. And yeah, we okay. are today, 2019, we are changing it. It is. But what I, even though I don't believe in that, and I don't necessarily believe in, in marriage, because even though I'm married, um, but I don't believe that a, an adult, that two adults in a relationship need a piece of paper to prove their commitment. Yeah. I mean, there's enough extramarital affairs going on to debunk that anyway. Yeah. So if you're committed to each other, I don't think you actually need a piece of paper that says you're committed to each other. No, but fully. if you want to get married, of course, get married. You know, I, I got married, even though I don't believe that it's because it was our such indo- a big deal. It was our indoctrination. That's how we were brought up. Well, and y- not just that. It's like it was important to my husband. I'd already been married once before, but it was important to my husband. And... Um, like, I was like, well, yeah, you know, I'd like to take your name. So, yes, let's get married. But, that, yeah, but true. It, 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 it did, I didn't need that and he didn't need that to prove our commitment to each other. So yeah. that's, that's how I feel about marriage. But what I do believe is that, and this is a, a thing that um, I think isn't being taught, in any sexual education program, apart from the fact that you should wait until you're married, I believe that sex is the most intimate and vulnerable thing you can do with yes, another yes. human being. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. There is no other time in your life that, that you will be any more open to mm. another human being than when you are making love with that person. 100%. It is, it is special. And it is sacred. Yeah. And so on that basis alone, I believe that we should be encouraging teenagers to put off having sex. Yeah. At the end of the day, all fair and well, I mean, I understand there should be sex education. We're busy discussing it now. It's making sense, but just not in the way what we saw in that video. Just just not like that. Can can we both agree on that? That, that I do 100%. Yeah, 100%. It because, it, it's wrong. Yes. And, and you know what? It's, to me, it seems like they're focusing on the pleasurable side of sex. And I'm sorry, but what is this horse shit? You can bleep that out if you need to. No. But what is this? No holds bar, Beth. No holds bar. <laughs> if you want to fucking swear, swear. <laughs> Don't tell me that because I'll start swearing. That will make your mother blush. It's, no, it's bad. It's really bad. Um, not disclosing your HIV status, 
and deciding with your partner to have unprotected sex, even oh. if you are HIV positive, mm -mm, mm -mm. are you freaking insane? You, fuck you. <laughs> there, there is just no way that that's okay. Oh, no, 100%. In, in no way, shape, or form. I understand that HIV is not, it's not killing people like it did in the beginning, when it was first discovered in the late 70s or 80s, early 80s, whatever it was, yeah. when it first came about. I get that. Yeah. But it is still a lifelong chronic condition. Yeah, well, these days it's gone. Affects, these it days, affects how you yeah. eat. Yeah, yeah. It does, yeah. It, you have to take medicines to manage it every day. Yeah. No. No, that is not okay. No, definitely. Definitely. Beth, I, th I think we covered it. I don't know. Is there anything else I you want to... I think we did. I think we covered it. I'm, I'm pretty happy. It was, it was an interesting chat, that. It was. What, what I would like to just add is that when we're talking about sex and teenagers, yeah. we need to um, bear in mind that teenagers are impulsive. Yeah. They do not have impulse control. Yeah. And it's because their frontal cortex isn't developed, and that's not developed until they're 25. 100%. So, so it's not developed, and it is still developing, and they have all of these hormones raging through their body, making them feel these urges that they actually probably don't even fully understand what they are yet. True, true. Um, so what we actually need to do is we need to explain to them that this is not a shameful thing that's happening in their bodies. Yeah. But it is something that they need to try and learn how to harness. And if they do decide, because, I mean, 16-year-olds declare that they're in love with someone, I mean, just about every other day. Yeah. I'm madly in love with this person. We're going to get married. We're going to grow old together. We're going to and everything. And they jump into bed with that person. We need to let them know what their contraceptive True. choices are. Well, my last saying is, I was thinking now, um, if, if governments feel that parents are not doing a good enough job in, in teaching their children about sex, then they should create uh, reform programs and then go into the township and rural areas and then yes. teach parents properly that, look, guys, this is sex education and this is what you should teach your children. If, if they feel that's the way that we should go. I still feel... It's the parents' job to I teach. I do think it's the parents' job, and yeah, I think you 100%. know what? I think we can hit them. I think we can hit them early. I think we can actually like start having these conversations with parents at the clinics when they take their children in for their checkups. Absolutely, and their there you go. Reform programs, absolutely, right there from the clinics, absolutely. Beth, lecker. Uh, yeah, that uh, that was a good chat. Even hundreds. though we don't agree on everything. But, no, well, we didn't. Did we, it wasn't a debate, was it? No, we didn't debate no. anything, did we? There was nothing. I, no. I agreed fully with you, Sid. And that's just the thing. But you're, you see your cognitive dissonance in some people. It blocks them because of the different ways that they were brought up. You know, that, that cognitive ability in your mind. It mm -hmm. blocks. I'm open. I'm open. I mean, I'm open for change. I mean, if there's a change, if we must... Do it in a special way, then let's do it, but just not vulgar, you know, just in a, in a way that's just that people can understand it better. And you know what? Just just stop focusing on the pleasurable side of it. Yeah. Just that's it. That's just it. Drop that stigma and stick to the science. And you'll see how simple it gets. Hundreds, yeah. Beth, thank you very much. Thank you. Don't go. Um, I'm just going to do my closing. And then I'm going to cut you off and I'll just say goodbye to you for there. Uh, my podcast is available on Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast. This podcast is broadcasted on Anchor FM. I will also put it on YouTube and Bitude. Thank you very much. Beth, you have a lovely, lovely afternoon, eh? And you too. All righty. Bye-bye.